Hi, I'm Tyler Don Rosenquist, The Ancient Bridge, and I want to talk to you about something funny, but it's not funny that we do when something bad happens to somebody we hate, or something good happens to us, or something bad happens to us, and something good happens to something we hate, someone we hate. And that is, we get really super hypocritical and weird, okay? So the, this teaching is going to be about is it judgment? And of course, judgment can be either condemnation or vindication because judgment is not a negative term. It's not a positive term. Well, it is a positive term if you're innocent and it's negative if you're guilty. And it's just a legal term. Who is right? Who is wrong? So we got judgment. We've got, is it consequences? Because sometimes there are just consequences for certain actions we or other people take. Is it the devil? Is he stealing my peace? Or is he blessing my enemies? Because it's always that, right? Um, <laughs> devil doesn't bless us, right? No, no. Um, or, you know, is it just life? I'm going to start out with a really, really shameful example from my own life. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So, <laughs> I remember once somebody tagged me on a social media post because they wanted me to answer some questions about covenants because I've written two books on covenants and so I come in and I never when I see questions I always assume they're genuine because I'm an idiot <laughs> but I only ever ask genuine questions so when I see questions it just doesn't occur to me unless I've seen the person's name before and I know that they mess with people well I hadn't seen this person's name before I didn't know that yeah Anyway, so I didn't realize it wasn't a genuine question. Not the guy who tagged me, the guy that was on the thread. Anyway, so I start answering questions because I've studied covenants a lot. I've studied all of the, uh, you know, all the major books on them, um, scholarly works and everything. And uh, so I'm answering questions, taking my time to answer questions. And all of a sudden I notice that him and another guy on the thread, well, they're starting to mock and double team me and they're egging me on and they're and I just I'm just genuinely answering stuff and then come out the cheap shots and the insults and I said you know what this is not honoring God um, I'm sorry but I just can't I can't take place I can't take part in this conversation it's it's shameful and there was absolutely I mean all we're doing is having a little disagreement here over nothing I mean it's Anyway, I'm going to leave the conversation and you get the last word. And, and then they, and then the one guy just really made some very nasty comments on the way out. And yeah, I later found out that he was a teacher within the, the Messianic movement. And of course, it was shameful behavior. Um, but we see a lot on social media, right? I don't know how big of a teacher he was. I, I'd never heard of him before, obviously, because I found out later. But about three weeks after this happens, he drops dead. So what do you think was the first thing that popped into my not completely redeemed little mind? Hmm. Well, I guess that's judgment. Oh, I mean, yeah, uh, uh, if you're cringing, imagine how I feel admitting it. And yet, I bet you've done similar things. Yeah, probably most of you have. Unless Yeshua is watching this, and then no. Um, but yeah, but immediately I went, oh my gosh, I can't believe I thought that. That is so shameful. Like, like what he did to me on one day. Okay, actually not even, it wasn't even a whole day. It was like, I think the conversation took like 15 minutes before it just totally degenerated. And I backed out and let him have the last word. Walked away. Um... But, like, no matter what he did in his life, <laughs> no, it was that, because I'm so important to God that God is judging him because of that. Oh, I'm so glad that God doesn't judge over so little. I would have been out of here. You guys, some of you remember how I was, you know, years ago. Just offensively horrible. Um, so if anyone was going to be dropping dead, it, it, it was me. But we do that when somebody we don't like has something terrible happen. And then we go, ah, judgment. Well, is that fair? Is that fair? What do we do when bad things happen to us? Um, uh, I think it was uh, November 10th. I, um, 
I had a stroke, a minor stroke, but I had a stroke and I was, I, I almost didn't ask for a prayer request because I thought, you know, <laughs> I thought how many people out there were going to go, aha, uh -huh, it's because she teaches such and such. God's striking her. He's taking her mind away from her. And <laughs> now I do have a stroke history. So, I mean, this was not the first time. And, um, <clears throat> you know, um, however many days later, I think it was 10 days later, I was just fine, you know, and, um, so, you know, which was, which was it? Was I struck down by God when I had the stroke or was I vindicated when, you know, I, I got better, you know, whoever answers is going to be showing their bias. And, and that's what we do. It's, it's awful. Did the devil make me better? No, the devil doesn't make me better. And it also wasn't necessarily God's vindication either. I'll tell you something. He used those 10 days to teach me some things, to remind me of some things I had forgotten from the first time I had a stroke. Um, just, just things that we have to learn in order to be compassionate people and to learn our limitations and to really be as aware as possible as you can when you've had a minor stroke because, you know, your brain just kind of goes on vacation for a little while. It's not really on speaking terms with the rest of your body. <clears throat> so anyway, but that's not what I, but that's the thing. You know, did the devil give me the stroke? No, I had a stroke history. Come on. The devil didn't give me a stroke. God didn't give me a stroke. He used it and the devil didn't heal me. And you know, God used that, you know, and praise God, I, I am healed and I'm fine now. And I've been studying like gangbusters and editing my friend's book and, you know, the brain's back working. But I don't see it as judgment. I see it as something in my life that is part of my life. That's something I have to endure. It doesn't speak, you know, of my righteousness or my unrighteousness. It is something in my life. Um, we adopted a special needs child. He was born with spina bifida, hydrocephalus, clubbed feet, Arnold Chiari malformation. Was he being judged? Was I being judged so severely that I couldn't even adopt a healthy child? No. That is my son, Andrew's um, burden. He has to learn to walk with that. It teaches him endurance. And there are certain elements of his character that the probably helps him to deal with because we all need those thorns in the flesh. I mean, you know, for somebody who spends their time studying and researching and everything, I'll tell you something, there is no greater thorn in the flesh than not being able to, you know, schedule a speaking engagement because I don't know if I'm going to have a stroke before it and not be able to do it. You know, it, it really, it keeps me very, very grounded. I'm it's a very humbling thing. It's, it's, it's a good thing in a lot of ways. Okay. It, it's good to know that I have limitations. Okay. And I am not all that in a bag of chips and God isn't going to keep my mind working 24 seven, 365 every year of my life, just because I am so awesome. You know, I'm just like everybody else. You're just like everybody else. All right. So so, you know, we look at that. Is it condemnation? Is it vindication? We really don't know. Was my son being condemned when he got his fingers cut off? Was he being vindicated when, uh, when the finger survived? Praise God that his finger survived and praise God that more weren't cut off. I mean, that was, oh man, that was, that was tough. That was tough. Eight weeks later. They're great. Okay, so consequences. You know, sometimes someone dies just because of consequences. It may not be their consequences. It's consequences in somebody else's life. A drunk driver is going to take somebody's life. That doesn't mean the person get, who got hit by a drunk driver, God used that drunk driver to take them out of the game. No. I mean, we can't even afford to think that because if we go there, then we have to go there when it's our relative, when it's our loved one. But we don't do that. No. When something bad happens to us, it's the devil stealing my peace. No. Things happen. And we have to extend grace in areas 
and especially with our enemies when something bad happens to them we can't just go and automatically assume that God is judging them you know that and, and when something good happens to them that Satan is blessing them for obedient service everything's more complicated than that all right um, consequences if I smoke all my life and I get cancer and I die that's consequences if I smoke and somebody else in my house gets cancer and dies, that's also a consequence, but it's a consequence of my actions. It doesn't reflect on them. They didn't do anything wrong. All right? Just, yeah, consequences. Um, like I talked about the devil. The devil doesn't own, the devil sometimes blesses us too because that's a great way to test us, okay? I mean, Job had been blessed. That's the way we talk about Job, okay? Job was blessed by God beyond abundance. So Satan didn't have to tempt him with that. Okay. But what about when, you know, the enemy comes and, you know, the adversary comes and torments and tempts us? Is it always with bad stuff? No, because bad stuff drives certain people closer to God, drives other people away. So we all have our personality flaws. Okay. Some people he gives the ministry success to. It's, it's true. Some people he gives money to. Some people he gives um, loving people in their life to. Because without hardship, and, and I'm talking about this in a very, very, you know, hypothetical way, okay? But you can be given blessings. You can be given people in your life that do nothing but love you, turn you into a spoiled brat. It's just, you know, we don't see the picture from above, so we don't know which of these things is happening with anybody, not even ourselves. So we got to be really, really keep our heads down and just live faithful lives regardless of the circumstances. And when our enemies die, we have to be sad. I mean, it is sad. Isn't it sad when somebody does terrible things to us and they die without having repented? You know, they're made in the image of God like we are. God wants to see all men redeemed. I mean, I can see being relieved that they're not around to tempt us anymore, but that should never turn into glee or happiness or a cause for celebration. Okay. Um, and, and my final thing is just life. But it's just life. My, my son was born with spina bifida. That's just life. I was born with a completely defective, twisted womb never capable of supporting life. I make like two days worth of progesterone a month, which is why the mustache always has to keep getting taken care of. <laughs> it's just life. Okay, God wasn't afflicting me before I was born with a twisted uterus. You know, um, any more than he was vindicating me by allowing us to adopt these wonderful children, these, these twin boys that we were allowed to adopt. He wasn't um, judging us by having us go through a contested adoption. That was, you know, and he, it didn't, it wasn't that he was necessarily vindicating us when we won. It's all so much more complicated than that, or maybe he was. But you know what? It's easy to look at the bad stuff happening in other people's lives and assume that's because they're doing something wrong. When I can't point to hardly any great man or woman of the Bible and see horrible things that didn't happen to them. Horrible things. When I mean, you think the flood was fun for Noah, it was horrifying. Horrifying, no Dramamine either. I mean, I'm only a little bit joking there. It, uh, it's horrifying. Abraham went through horrifying things that we can't imagine. Uh, David, Bathsheba went through horrible, horrible things because of David's actions. Um, David's daughter Tamar, she didn't deserve that. You know, um, Paul, you know, all the, all the saints that are recorded in the service of God from the very beginning, terrible things happened to them and wonderful things happened to them. And you know what? We can't read the mind of God and we can't say well this was this and this was that unless it was written down and when we're looking at the lives around us it's never written down but a lot of times our our imagination goes a little bit wild 
because in our act in our overactive imagination and our wishful thinking and our unforgiving hearts bent on retaliation and revenge that sometimes we get compromised because we really want the bad things that happen to be to our enemies to be all about what they did to us or our friends or our loved ones or whoever anyway i love you <laughs> and i hope you are just having a wonderful, fruitful, productive week. And I hope you've been catching my teachings on forgiveness and fostering peace because, hey, God has me in horrible pain right now, and I hate to have it be wasted on me alone. So if you want to be in pain too and be really challenged, you know, check them out, Facebook, on social media. Anyway, I love you.